The call for the practice of true federalism in Nigeria has again received a massive boost. This time, it is from foremost Yoruba social cultural group, Afeni Ferry. Good afternoon and welcome to Standpoint. I'm Ibrahim Shita. Now, President Muhammad Buhari played host to leaders of Yoruba social cultural group, Afeni Ferry Aliaso Villa in Abuja recently. The group presented a five point demand to the president, and top on the list was a call for the practice of true federalism in the country. They say it is the solution to the security and economic challenges facing the country. President Buhari had in May declared his support for the adoption of the, uh, true federalism, an action that took many Nigerians by surprise as the president had never taken a stance on the issue of federalism and restructuring. I have with me in the studio to talk more on this, the chairman of the Afeni Ferry Renewal Group, Wale Oshun. Thank you so much for coming Thank on Standpoint. Thank you. Now, um, most oftentimes we hear the words restructuring, self-determination, regionalism, so on and so forth. But then what is really top on this conceptual word is that um, tr the word true federalism, which has different kind of uh, definitions, uh, different kind of perspectives to it. But what in your own estimation is this definable dimensions to that particular word, true federalism, what does it really mean to you? Well, I, I think the best thing is to start from the concept of federalism itself. Right. And uh, when you speak of federalism, you also look at the other extreme, which is unitary and uh, the confederal system of government. Now, but when you speak of true fed uh, when you speak of federalism, you are speaking in respect of two layers of governance or of government where there is collaboration, more like a cooperative uh, decision to mm -hmm. work together. And uh, here you are now talking in terms of two bodies that expressly come together to work together to discuss how to work together, which is to say that uh, there's a national government or what you call a central government, right. and then there's that federating unit. And the federating units would, of course, you know, they, they are cogent in terms of the negotiation that goes into evolving the system, right. which is to say that in a true federal system, you are having basically two operating parties who have agreed to come together to cede one level of power or the other to one another. But it, you, certainly it is cooperative. Well, so how, how imperative do you think the government need to uh, make a bold political reform to really actualize this true federalism? You know, we what, really what we there? have now if you co correctly defined, properly interpreted, it's a unitary form of government. Right. That is a national government that possesses practically all the powers. Now you look at the constitution and, and it speaks about exclusive, uh, in the present constitution there are almost 68 items that are in the exclusive list. Yeah. And then even the so-called recurrent you know, the national government is still having, you know, almost a greater role, a greater say, because there's always a provision that where the laws conflict, where the national laws conflict with the federating unit law, the national laws, you know, are, are supreme. Mm -hmm. So, mo totally, totally unitary. So, w what uh, federalism, and that is what our forefathers negotiated. Uh, uh, the founders of this country, that was what they negotiated to have a federation. When you were saying our forefathers, are you yes, referring our, to our the founding time fathers? The, I'm the talking now. Bafemi Awolowo. Uh, uh, Bafemi Awolowo, uh, Amadou Bello. Okay, vis a vis the 1963 constitution. Is vis a vis, that where you're going? yes, the independence constitution and the republican constitution of 1963. That but if was you want to go. Was basically agreed right. upon. A true, a federal a federation called Nigeria. And that was when you could have each federating unit, there were regions, right. they had their respective constitutions. 
And that made it possible for uh, Western region, for instance, to maintain relationships with Israel, while, of course, the Northern region was averse to having any relationship with Israel enabled a situation in which the Western region could open its own Latin office in, 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 in England to look after its interests. So what you have was a truly uh, federal yes. concept in action mm. as at that time. But, but then, is, is that realizable as it stands now? Because, um, for instance... Why, um, why is it not realizable? Uh, for, let, let me give you an instance. Yes, um, yes. General Yakubu Gowon doubted if this so-called restructuring yes. can be achieved. He said there would be over 500 types of it owing to our diversity, uh, a line of ethnicity and aspirations. Yes. How does this sound to you? Well, what is important is that the more diverse a nation is, right. in terms of religion, culture, language, the more diverse it is, then the more imperative that it is federal. The more diverse, which is to say that the federating units must retain the powers to run their affairs. And what you just have is more of a coordinatory role at the center mm -hmm. in which certain given functions, like maybe foreign relations, military, uh, having um, protecting the, inter inter the territorial integrity of the country, when you now start talking of that, that is when you have a function that is almost exclusive to the national government. So the more, the more complex the diversity, the more imperative for a federal uh, constitution. Well, uh, let us try to visit um, the gains of this true federalism that, we, um, that is being advocated for. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you want to compare it vis-a-vis -vis what it used to be in the, when we used to have six regions yes. in the country, what are the gains? What, are, what is the thing in need for Nigerians? What, are, what is it that we're going to benefit? Now, first and foremost, there is no how you, we can have federation, true federation in our country, without having strong federating units. When I say strong federating units, you are talking in terms of federating units that will have the powers to generate its own resources that will not be limited to generating resources. What the national government will survive upon would be taxing the revenue or the, uh, the gen whatever accrues to each region. Mm -hmm. So uh, the regions, of course, will have different capacities, different capabilities. But what you would find is that every region in this country, every region in this country has its own peculiar strength and its own peculiar weakness. Okay, so if we have to tap from these um, peculiarities yes. this state have in this country. Now, looking at the current revenue sharing formula, where the federal government takes 52.68%, the state 26.72%, and the local government 20.60%, with 13% derivation to the oil-producing okay. states. So this indeed has been described as un unconstitutional. So how can we properly you know, harness all of these things? How can we properly reallocate or, yeah, reallocate well, uh, uh, these things? It's, to not, it's not about, if, if, you are, if we really mean to federalize, it will now not be a question of, first of all, having a federation account and the federal government taking up all the resources of the country. No. Mm. All the federating units will have the capacity to generate their own resources. Mm -hmm. And then these resources are taxed by the federal government. It could be that, okay, from whatever resources a federating unit is able to generate, maybe the federal government is taking 20%, 25%. And that is total. And what, what that then means is that if this is a strong region, it might be paying double what the other weak region is paying to the national account. But it would have been issued be responsible, which is to say that oil producing regions would make all the money and pay tax to the federal. You, you are very much aware of this, uh, the Yoruba agenda 
yes. which um, you're really part of. Now, uh, the, it is proposed in it that um, the center will be taking 30 percent uh, on the basis of equality and 70 percent on the basis of population. So that is something that it's not quite understandable. Can you no, somewhat no, shed more light on that? Let's put it this way. The original concept, mm -hmm. well, any time you talk about f a federalism, right. true federalism, we, of course we are moving away maybe because in terms of negotiations, you need a breathing space, you need a time to get all the federating units to right. adjust their levels of productivity and to adjust to the new concept. But the thing is that there is no question of sharing of resources when you are talking of a federation. What you are talking about is contributing to the center mm -hmm. on an agreeable basis. So you generate all your resources and you put a given percentage down to the center and every other region will do the same. Okay. It, it is not like we say now, but this can be a stopgap measure like during the 2014 confab it was agreed that perhaps in 10 years time you can have this devolution mm. where the 13 percent keeps increasing until you get to a point in okay. which what you then do is to pay your own contribution rather than uh, taking you know handouts from the federation all right we'll, we'll, we'll take a break now at this juncture and then when we come back we'll try to look at whether this true federalism will help solve the issue of security or insecurities we face in this country we'll be back stay with us you're watching standpoints and we've been talking about the concept of true federalism trying to demystify what it really means by having true federal state or true federal system in the country. And I've been speaking with the chairman of the Afeni Ferry Renewals, Renewal Group, uh, Wali Oshun. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Thank you. And now, before we went on the break, uh, we looked at um, how allocation can really be done, uh, allocating resources can really be done, and revenue generation can also be done in the state. Uh, but before we move to whether this thing can solve the issue of insecurity in the country, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit issued new guidelines meant to protect the financial integrity of expenditure, fight corruption and address money laundering challenges at the local government level. Is this part of the features of the true federal states that, we, that, that you are advocating? No, but this is an interesting concept because it, it, if we truly have a federation, what we'll be having will be the national government, which is the central government in Abuja, and then the federating unit. Now, even as we speak, the states are the federating unit. Mm -hmm. And that is as far as the definition of a true federal system connotes. The local governments are essentially the responsibilities of the state governments, whether in terms of the laws, other than the constitution making a prescription that those who head the local governments must be elected. That is a constitutional prescription. Mm -hmm. Any other issue, whether of establishment, of funding, of this, now comes under the laws made by the respective state house of assembly, which is to say that anything having to do, you know, and, and Lagos State you know, really tested that ground when it created new local mm -hmm. governments. So what I'm then saying is that NFIU is crossing its own border, going into that... Uh, we, 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 into have to that hasten, we have to hasten our conversation. Yeah. Now, uh, for instance, uh, um, if you look at the issue of um, security, yes. the Alafian for you says, as of now, that the center is too powerful, yeah. in his own word, beyond any mortal capacity to supervise and superintend the old national security, hence the demand for state police. So the fear of people is that governors might misuse state police, uh, the, the, the state police concept. Yes. Uh, so what is your own perspective to this? Is this something that can be misused or is something that we we'll really need? No, we, uh, of course we really need state police. We need community policing. And it, it, I mean, if you, take this if by, by extrapolation, 
uh, you must have heard about ISBA, the, the Sharia police mm -hmm. in the north. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is there, even if it is not called the police, it, it is a law enforcement uh, body. Every society, policing is easier when it is done by people from that area. Even in all we, of this. We, 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 all, we all agree to that yeah. concept. Right. Even in all of this, before yeah. we even say we have this true federalism, yeah. we, we need to really work at our constitution. Now we need to devolve powers, if, even if the constitution now specifies that only the police are the national mm -hmm. that can run the security in the country. But it is failing, it is not working. No, like this, the recently the, uh, the, the Eighth Assembly passed a police reform bill, yeah. and they said that is really the way to go, yeah. to reform the Nigerian police the system, Nigerian which has been police. on for, for many years. Yes, I'm going to the state policing and community policing. If, if it can be abused at any level, it can be abused at any level. Which is to say that if the governor can abuse it, it means that those in control at the center can also abuse the national police or the central police. But then that doesn't justify the fact that, or that doesn't justify uh, the need for state police. No, the need for state police is warranted by the diversity of our needs. Okay. The fact that it is no longer possible for the central police to effectively police, you know, uh, the country. It is no longer possible. And uh, the, the fact that it is easier when you have policing done at the primary level, where people speak the same language, speak, have the same culture, they understand the system better than having policemen coming from. Of course, you still have federal police, mm -hmm. you still have national police for crimes of interstate, crimes that have uh, international dimension, you still have that. Okay, so are you saying that the president's promise, uh, promise that uh, to, to end banditry and other kind of crimes in the country, kidnapping, etc., etc., it will really need to get hold of the state police to ensure that it's No, it's inside. essential that we have both uh, state police, wh whatever you decide to call it, a federating mm. policing system, and the community policing system. Certainly, it will complement uh, the, the fight against uh, the insurrection that we now experience across the whole country. Let me get your perspective um, with this another, tr another initiative being you know, advanced by the federal government. It has insisted to execute the newly proposed Rugos, uh, Ruga Settlement uh, <laughs> project in states <laughs> Because they believe that yeah, this is going to solve the farmer headers crisis uh, that is ravaging you know, many parts of the country. Let me tell you, agricultural policy is also, I mean, agricultural productivity or production is basically a rural thing, is basically a local thing. Every locality can determine and should be allowed to determine its own policies. But talking about Ruga, of what use would it be? The Western region used to have agricultural settlements. And these settlements are determined by the needs of the region. You know, whether it is crop, whether right. it is livestock, it is determined by the needs of the region. So what I'm then saying is that every government in the country can decide which direction to go within their own land space. Well, it would be wrong for the federal government to come to Lagos or your to set up, you know, a Ruga settlement for complete non-indigenous of that area. It, it shouldn't be, it, no, it is no, not no, no. so. The, 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 one of the arguments advanced as well is saying that it's not just going to be, that it's not only yeah. anyone who is into um, herding. Uh, but in any case, uh, life, rearing, life, livestock, what, management, what, what, livestock what, management is a business like any other businesses and what we say here is that the state should have its own responsibility in determining its own agricultural policy. So, so in a nutshell, you, yes. you, you are not in, you are not in no, term with No, certainly uh, not true, Ga, no, certainly no. Even no. though it's going to help the economy of the country, as they, as they say. But let me tell you this. Why do you need X-Men moving around? It is, it is inconsistent with agricultural productivity. It is inconsistent. Be, because at the end of the day, what you do with no, livestock... Because by what, nature, what they have to move. No, no, no. What you they do with nomad. livestock management, by now, in fact, all that should have changed. Because what you, should, what you do with livestock management is, 
increasing the weight of the animals, increasing the uh, milk productivity of the animals, and that you don't do by moving the animals from one point to the other. It is by making sure that they are properly cottered, fed, and properly raised. That is the reason they are advancing these rugal settlements again. No, no, no. What we are then saying is that that can be done by the respective state governments. And it will be developing their own potential. Every part of this country has an agricultural potential. Let each locality determine their potential. Now, this, this concept of um, true federalism, uh, once again, is something, if we have it, is it a, a, a situation where, when it is in place, the, nation, the national minimum wage will now be set by each region? Is that, but, is that, but, is that a thing? But, you know, if you look at this, that you are working in Lagos, a single room in a tenement apartment, maybe it's going for 4,000, 5,000 a month. And then the same room, possibly in Ekwe or in Ibadan, is going for 1,500. You are talking, when you talk of minimum wage, you are looking at many indices, housing index, food index, and all that. So, and all this should come into it. Then the capacity, productivity within the state environment. So there is certainly no point in Lagos State, for instance, having the same minimum wage, say with uh, Borno State, or River State having the same minimum wage with Oyo State, because the indices are completely different. They are variant. So it's a federating unit should be able to determine its own minimum wage. And there's no point in determining a national minimum wage, which many states cannot pay or cannot um, implement mm -hmm. simply because it takes note of the consumption indices in the high, you know, uh, cost uh, So, so you're, not, you, you're not also wary of the fact that some are saying, no, if we uh, ensure that we have this true federalism, it's going yeah. to whittle down the power of the, you know, of the center of the federal government. But and when we have most of the governors who are leaving their yeah. positions after eight years, yes. I in uh, executive positions, you know, at the federal level, saying they want to go to Senate, and so when you're saying we should scrap no, everything, no, but, but what ha of. what will happen at that time is that a large percentage of politicians would rather be contest offices within their regions, mm. because what what would ordinarily happen in the center would just be more of a larger perspective of coordination rather than breathing down the neck of every every federating unit. And uh, the attraction would be in being part of the growth and development of your own indigenous area. Of course, sometimes the best will still have to go to the center, but you won't have the mad rush that you do have now. And you now have, uh, if I don't get it, uh, Okay, before, 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 we, before we go, yes. now one thing that really baffles me is the fact that they say, uh, this true federalism might not work, but this, some say it might work, just like you're yes. also arguing you know, on, on, on the program this afternoon. Now, they the, the, the said the country, you know, we have, everyone thinks of where he or she comes from first. Yes. The Yoruba will say I'm from Yoruba land. Mm -hmm. They are Igbo, Hausa, Efiki, people will name the rest. So do you feel we can really actualize that system that can really wedge all of the ethnic groups together? you know, without having to go separate ways and still no, being no, in the we, same we, country. You see, having a true f federal government does not necessarily mean that there will be disintegration, no. And it does not mean that there cannot be a Nigerian nation and a Nigerianness. There will still be a Nigerianness, but the fact remains that if you look at, it will come to a point in which you will be proud to be part of your region, you'll be proud to be a Nigerian. But if you are not a proud Yoruba man, you can't be a proud Nigerian. Right. Thank you so much, um, Chairman Afeni Ferry Renewal Group, uh, Wale Oshun. Thank you so much for coming thank, on Standpoint. Thank you very much. And that's how we wrap up today's edition of Standpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ibrahim Shita. Enjoy your day. Bye bye.